Looking at my audience demographics, it's statistically likely that you either have young children already, or having children is something that you're thinking about. And here's a controversial idea. Having children is wrong. You should not create people, and you yourself were wronged by being created. Discuss. First of all, though, it's important that we realize the question, were you wronged in being created, is not related to the question, are you glad to be alive? I hope you are glad to be alive, but it could still be the case that your parents wronged you by making you. People would be glad if they were mind-controlled or brainwashed, but that doesn't mean it's an okay thing to do. Second, we're talking here about whether it's good for you to have been created, and whether it's good for your possible children to be created. It's probably very good for all of us that you were created, because you're so lovely and special and such a light in the world, but that doesn't mean it was good for you. We're talking here only about the value to the person being created. Philosopher David Benatar says that being created is a harm, it's a bad thing, because of what he calls the asymmetry between pain and pleasure. The absence of pain is good. An empty room in which nobody is suffering, well, that's a good thing. But the absence of pleasure is only bad if there is someone who exists who is missing out. An empty room in which nobody is experiencing pleasure, well, who cares? Missing out on pleasure is only bad insofar as it produces actual pain. Non-existence is good from the point of view of potential people who would otherwise have suffered, but nobody laments the non-existence of all the people who could be here experiencing pleasure with us. The asymmetry between pain and pleasure, Benatar says, explains why we generally think it would be wrong to create someone if they're only going to suffer, but at the same time we don't feel like we're obliged to create new people so that they can experience pleasure. That's because, Benatar says, from the point of view of non-existence, avoiding suffering is what matters. The upshot is that if you create someone, you are responsible for all the pain they suffer. And even if they live a great life, there will be some pain. And because of the asymmetry of pain and pleasure, it would be better for them to have never been born. Even if they live an amazing life with only one second of pain, it's still better for them never to have been created. They would have missed out on that pain, and since they wouldn't exist, they wouldn't care about missing out on the pleasure. Since you do happen to be alive, it may well be worth your while continuing your life, you know, now that you're committed, but David Benatar says the only life worth beginning is one that is completely free of pain, which for practical purposes is none of them. So Benatar is an anti-natalist, Antinatalism is the position that people should not have children, that it's a bad thing to do. You could be antinatalist for all kinds of reasons, environmental reasons, maybe, but in Benatar's case, he's one because he believes that having children actually harms them. He calls it procreational Russian roulette with a fully loaded gun. He thinks that we actually have a moral duty not to have children, which means that nobody can have any reproductive rights. Remember the video I did on human rights a while ago? You can't have a moral right to do something that you have a moral duty not to do. You could still adopt children who are currently alive, and Benatar doesn't think this necessarily means we need to have forced sterilization, but obviously, if this became a generally adopted viewpoint, society would change hugely. It might also have profound theological implications. If you're a believer, and Benatar is right, then if God created humanity, that was a serious moral crime on God's part. But if you're very clever, you might have spotted something odd about Benatar's argument. Feminist and applied ethical philosopher Christine Overall challenges the asymmetry of pain and pleasure. She asks, is it really good that no one is suffering from the point of view of potential people? Potential people don't exist. They have no point of view. To be potentially existing is the same as not existing. If avoiding suffering is good, it must be good from the point of view of people who already exist. So when Benatar says that non-existence is good from the point of view of potential people who would otherwise have suffered, it's a cheat. There is no such point of view. Potential people don't exist to have a point of view. If the question is, are you worse off having been created, then we need to ask, worse off than what? Words like better and worse are comparative. 
They require us to have two states that we can compare. But non-existence is not a state that anyone can be in. In the scenario in which you were not born, it can't be the case that you would have been better off, because you wouldn't have been anything, never mind better off. That doesn't mean, though, that having children is definitely an okay thing to do. In fact, in her book, Why Have Children, overall argues that it's actually a very serious moral decision that we all need to be thinking more about. I really do recommend that book. We've talked about it once before on the channel when I did a video on father's rights and child support and I still get angry commenters under that one. Thinking philosophically about having children prompts us to remember just what a serious decision it is and how important all the rights and duties and responsibilities that come with it are. It also prompts us to think more generally about what a good human life is for everyone. At patreon.com slash philosophytube, you can help me give away free education on YouTube. If that's something you could do, please do feel free to chuck me a couple of bucks. I could really use it. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe.